So it's been a few months since Google released their Nest Mini, which is their smaller and more affordable smart home speaker. I have a bunch of them right here. And this is a video I've actually been holding out on. I really wanted to make this video, but I wanted to wait until after I used this speaker for several months to really get a good read on it to make a proper video for you guys. So it might seem like this is just a simple little speaker and there's nothing to it, but I wanted to do a couple things in this video. So I first wanted to give you guys a full review of the Google Nest Mini to show you everything you need to know about it, including my review and a comparison to the Google Home Mini, which is similarly priced and looks almost identical, but it does have some subtle differences that you wanna know before you buy either one of these. And then part two of this video, I actually wanna dive into some of the settings of this, including how to set it up, which should be very brief, and then some of the settings that I like to use and optimize to really customize the Google Nest Mini for my needs in my home to get the most out of this affordable budget speaker. And on top of that, one other thing I will mention later on in the video is I'm actually doing a giveaway. I have one right here. I'll be giving this out if you guys are interested in getting a free Nest Mini. Just watch the rest of this video and I will tell you exactly how you can win this. So starting off, I wanna give you guys just a physical tour of the Nest Mini right here. Starting with the top, you'll see that there's actually nothing exciting when it's powered off, but you do actually have a strip of LEDs underneath the fabric, which is pretty common. You also have a, an LED on either side where the volume is, so it does indicate where you're supposed to tap to change the volume. And this fabric, according to Google, is also made of recycled water bottles, which I know people really shouldn't be using water bottles that are single use, but it is good that Google is at least trying to be a little bit more sustainable there and trying to recover what other people already used. Now, on the back then, we have a little hanger right there. This is something that we did not see on the old Google Home Mini. So side by side, you can see uh, this one did not have a hanger. You could buy a third party hanger if you wanted, but most people did not. Most people just use like command strips or something to stick it to the wall. So having a hook is actually really nice. Then you'll see on the side, you have the little switch right there to turn the microphone on or off. So if you want Google to not listen to you, you can turn it off. But another thing with the Google Assistant is if you don't want it to listen to you, you can always just say, hey Google, that wasn't for you. And then what it does is it erases whatever it might've recorded. Then on the other side right there, you have actually a major difference between the two speakers. So on the bottom, the white one is the Google Home Mini on the top of the Google Nest Mini, and you'll see the power supply is actually something they changed there. So no longer is it a micro USB. Originally, I don't know why they didn't use USB-C, but on this one, the Google Nest Mini, they still don't have USB-C, and instead they have their own proprietary uh, DC power supply right there. It comes with it in the box, so you don't have to worry about that. And people aren't really moving this around much. People don't usually travel with their Google Nest Mini, so for the most part, you plug it in and you never have to worry about that again. So that's essentially everything you wanna know about this. Also on the top, there is an ultrasonic sensor, so it does know when your hand gets close to it, so it can do things like light up the LEDs for you uh, and otherwise just be more responsive. So it is nice that it has that. Otherwise, you'll see it's very small. It is almost exactly the same size and shape. I think it is the same size and shape. So if you had any kind of third-party little mounters or something for the Home Mini, they will also work on the Nest Mini. So I think that's really nice right there. One of the biggest differences between the Google Nest Mini and the Google Home Mini, according to Google themselves, is the speaker quality. And I will test that out for you guys later on in this video. But Google said that the bass is supposed to be twice as good on the Google Nest Mini. So twice as good is a little bit ambiguous there. So we'll dive in and see exactly what that is. But honestly, I will say that the speaker is significantly better. Originally, you had a $49 smart speaker, typically on sale for like $25 to $35, and it definitely sounded like a cheap speaker. So yes, you had some great functionality in there, but when playing music, it definitely was something that lacked in quality and volume and bass and just many other aspects of sound. Now, the Google Nest Mini, after trying this out for several months, I can say, the sound quality is a massive improvement over the Google Home Mini. And we can test these out, like I said, later on in the video, but I noticed that the bass is significantly louder. And on top of that, you do also have a better balance with your mids, your trebles, and your bass. It just, it's an overall better sounding speaker. You will notice that one drawback on this is that it does not have a three and a half millimeter jack on the bottom or the back anywhere. But this is something that we see on a lot of phones and just pretty much everywhere, people are getting rid of the headphone jack. And so this device is another thing that also does not have 
the headphone jack. So what you can actually do is have Bluetooth input or output from this speaker. I'll show you that a little bit later on in the video if you guys are interested, but you won't have a headphone jack. Okay, so both of these are set to 75% volume. Let's see how they sound starting with the Google Home Mini. Now let's go up to 100% volume. Now let's go down to 40% volume. So with these lower levels, you can really hear the bass difference on the Google Nest Mini. Recently, Google and Amazon have sort of been in an arms race with who can get out the most voice assistance in the homes, because once you have kind of a gateway, like if you have a Google Nest Mini in your home, odds are you're not going to buy an Echo product next. Instead, you're more likely to expand your Google ecosystem. So for that reason, they've been kind of dropping prices a lot of both of these. And so this normally sells for $49, but I would recommend waiting until there's a sale because there's almost definitely going to be a sale within the next month or something where it drops down to $25 or $35. And I'll put a link in the description if you guys want to check that out. Hi, to get started, download the Google Home app on a phone or tablet. Okay, so first download the Google Home app, go to add, Go to Setup Device, and within Setup Device, you want to go down to Set Up New Devices. Um, select your household there, and it will look for the device. You want to make sure you are on the same Wi-Fi. So then once you're all connected, you'll have to go through a whole bunch of end-user agreements. I think there's like 13 different agreements you have to sign or agree to. Most people don't read them. They just say agree all. Then it goes to Voice Match. For me, I already have this set up, so it should say we are already set up. And then it has a bunch of sponsored things. So if you want to add Pandora or satellite radio or Netflix or whatever else, um, you can go and do that right now. So I'm just going to say no to all of that. And then we're all done. The last thing I want to show you guys are some of my favorite settings and features to implement with your Google Nest Mini. Some of these are specific to the speaker. Some of them are specific to the Google Assistant. But all of them I think are really cool and can really enhance your experience with the Google Nest Mini. But before we get into that, I wanna tell you guys how you can enter to win this Google Nest Mini here. So this one's totally unopened. I just have an extra and I figured I'd give back to you guys and ship this to you. I'll pay for shipping and everything. Um, but all you have to do is you don't have to subscribe to my channel. If you want to, you're welcome to subscribe, but uh, you just have to do two things. The first, you have to comment on this video. Leave a comment telling me what your favorite feature is with the Google Nest Mini. This could be something that the smart, like the Google Assistant is able to do or something just about the speaker itself. Then two, you have to head over to Instagram and like my most recent picture um, because I will be actually contacting you through Instagram. So I have to send people over there. So head on over there, follow me, like my picture, and I will DM you if you win. So I'll be picking a winner in exactly two weeks from now, two weeks from the time I release this video. So make sure you enter to win. All right, getting into the settings though, in the Google Home app, when you open up your speaker, if you tap on settings on the top right, you'll see all the settings for your speaker. And what you wanna do is go on down to where you see Bluetooth devices. So two really cool things here bundled into one. The first one is pairing or playing as a Bluetooth speaker there. So if you don't want to cast, you can easily just pair it as a Bluetooth speaker from your laptop or your phone and play whatever audio is on your phone through that as a Bluetooth speaker. This is great for videos or anything of that nature. Then the second thing, kind of two for one here, if you go to default music speaker, you can actually pair a Bluetooth speaker with this and play the music through there on a different speaker. So if you have a bigger Bluetooth speaker that is not a smart speaker, bundle these two together, set them you know, within the same proximity, pretty close to each other, and you can use the Bluetooth speaker as the output for the Google Nest Mini. I think that's a really nice thing to have there. Um, so that's one thing I, pe I think people don't really know about. The other one is the speaker groups. So if you have multiple Google Nest Minis, homes, whatever, Google products like that, you can use them as a group and play things simultaneously. So if you go back to your Google Home right here, and you can actually go and create a new group just from the top. If you go up to the top and say add, uh, you can actually set up a group of speakers. So create a speaker group, 
Great way to have your entire house play music if you, if you have a party or have maybe two rooms play a podcast so you can walk between them and hear what's playing in whatever room you're in. I think this is really nice. Uh, I use that feature actually all the time. Another great feature in the settings is actually night mode. So you can actually enable this to reduce the volume of the responses and the brightness of the LEDs in your bedroom. Uh, so late at night, if you don't wanna be uh, disturbed, it's too bright, too loud, it's pretty easy to do this. And I think that's a kind of nice feature to have. Now, a little bit more on the side of Google Assistant. Something I like is the music alarm. So you can tell Google to set a music alarm. It'll ask you when you want the alarm or a timer or whatever. And it'll also ask you what song you want it to play. So I think that's a great way to maybe for some people to wake up in the morning. Then you can also use conjunctions like and or then and give multiple uh, directions at once. You can say, hey Google, set a timer and turn the volume down. And it'll do both of those. And it's great if you are playing music and you know it's on volume 10 and you wanna turn it down really quickly, just bundle those together and you don't have to say, hey Google, twice. Then on top of that, the last thing I wanna tell you guys is broadcasting, which I think more people might know about this. But you can broadcast from one Google Home or Google anything really from your phone works as well to other Google Homes within the same household. And it works like an intercom system. So I can use my phone and say, you know, broadcast. So you just say broadcast, you say, hey Google, broadcast, dinner's ready. And it'll tell everyone that dinner's ready, they'll come down. Um, and it's a great way if you have a family of like five or six people and there's Google Nests or Google Nest Minis all over the house, it's a great way to tell everyone that dinner's ready. So. Guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please remember to like and subscribe. This is what I have to say about the Google Nest Mini. I think it's a really great product. If you're stuck between this one and the Google Home Mini, I would almost always recommend the Google Nest Mini. But if you are using a Bluetooth speaker that's bigger and you find a really good deal on a Google Home Mini, or if you just don't care about music, then the Google Home Mini does essentially the same stuff as the Google Nest Mini. So I don't know that it necessarily constitutes an upgrade for most people, but if you're choosing between the two as your first purchase, I would really recommend going with the Nest Mini. So as always guys, thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.